everybody, Purple Photographer here and welcome back to my channel. So we're going to be doing something a little bit different this week as the title suggests. Um, so I'm just going to walk you through uh, my personal photography equipment and this is what I kind of use on a daily daily basis. Um, so with that, let's get on with it and today's video is what's in my bag photography edition. So we're going to start with the most obvious item of equipment, which is the camera. So this is um, a Canon 70D digital DSLR. Um, <clears throat> this is about a, a mid-range camera. So this is kind of what, um, I mean, I sh at my level I should be using a really uh, large, um, full frame. This, this isn't a full frame, it's just a 35mm. Um, going into a little bit of technical terms there but I'm sure that uh, if most of you watching this are familiar with photography equipment already then you'll all already know what I'm on about. Um, so this yeah pretty much a, just a medium range uh, camera for Canon. Um, so as you can see by the number uh, what, what Canon tend to do with their models is the the actual lower the number is the better the camera so I started out with a 1000D and then I moved up to a 450D and then this obviously this is a 70D and probably the most uh, upmarket range most photographers tend to use is the 5D which I'm hoping to upgrade to very shortly so <clears throat> yeah this is a um, lovely little piece of equipment so she served me well for two and a half years now and still going strong and yeah I don't I don't think there's anything wrong with her she um she was HD video uh 1080p uh HD video um she got so the, the actual back pops out on this one so the, the, that's where you can find the viewfinder display um and yeah, she's a really nice little piece of equipment. So yeah, that's the camera that I use and you see me recording with most of the time. So my friend today actually was very kind to lend me her camera so I could actually shoot this video as mine. Obviously I have to show you her. So yeah, that is my camera. So moving on to lenses. This is my baby. So this is a Canon 24 to 70 millimeter uh, zoom lens. So zoom being that it zooms in and out. Uh, so Canon kind of do do zoom lenses, but you also get fixed uh, um, lenses, which I'll show you a bit later on. Um, so this this is pretty much what I use on a daily daily basis. Uh, if I've got a more specialized job, then I will use different lens. But this uh, pretty much. Um, has all different uses, so it's got quite a variety of f-stops on it. Um, I wouldn't recommend using this in low light conditions, um, but yeah, anything other than that, um, it's fantastic. Uh, so it has got a macro setting on it, so if you wanted to like really get close to your or close and personal with your subject, um, but there are specialised macro lenses. Uh, out there. Not that I have one, but maybe one day. You just pop the lens cap off and that's what it looks like without the lens cap on. And you attach it to the camera with the red dot there. So if you got the camera, you would line the red dot up with the, the camera and just twist. I'm just going to pop that back in for safety. So yeah. Um, so this, this is quite a wide zoom lens um which is why it's very good just for daily uh, da daily tasks um but yeah there's my 24 to 70. now i'm moving on to lenses which i don't use as much but i tended to use um earlier in my photography career uh when i was first starting out so this so this lens is an 18 to 55 mil so this is what comes with most cameras already if you don't buy body only. Um, so this is 
pretty much just your standard lens. So basically the this is just a way better version of this. Um, this one doesn't actually work because I bought it off I bought it off eBay because uh, when I got my camera it was just my body only and I really miss this lens for some reason. Um, so I got bought it off eBay like £40 second hand, worked for about three months and then just but yeah I, I did enjoy using it when I first started out but as you get work your way up and you get a bit more professional it's not really that great. Um, so I I recommend this is, if you're first starting out then it comes in really handy uh, obviously it's another zoom lens um, doesn't really go out that far since it only goes since it's only 55 now um, has got a macro setting on it but it's not yeah it's not really that great but yeah great if you're first starting out if you're just a budding photographer that's great so moving on um, Yes, this is a Canon Ultrasonic H5 mm lens. Uh, this is a actually a fixed lens, so you can't zoom in and out with it. Uh, this is great if you're shooting um, portraiture. Now these these lenses do work better with a full frame camera, which I don't have, which is why I don't tend to use it that often. Because what what tends to happen when you just use these kind of lenses on 35 mm camera, digital camera, is it it just crops the crops the image out, so it, you don't get the um, the same results as you would if you were using a full frame camera but yeah great if you're more professional and you've got a full frame like the 5D uh, 5D Mark II or something like that um, so it's got um, automatic and manual focus um, all the other lenses have as well but yeah it's just great for um, yeah this has got quite a, a range of apertures f-stops in it as well um, yeah, like I said, great for portraiture, uh, things like that. Um, yeah, it's come in handy on a couple of occasions, but like I said, it doesn't really work great that great with my camera. Um, so I'm hoping that when I upgrade to a full frame camera eventually, um, it will I will start using it more. So yeah, moving on. Now this really big one is a Canon. Ultrasonic again, 70 to 300 mm lens. Now I use I used to use this so much when I first started, uh, probably because um, when I first started out on photography, I did I shot quite a lot of wildlife, so you, you can get really far at uh, far out. Uh, obviously, this is another Canon zoom lens. Um, yeah, so when you go out to 300 mm, you can see how far it extends. Um, yes, yeah, so this is really great for if you're out, out and about, and you're uh, keen on wild, keen on wildlife photography, uh, things like that. Even uh, sports photography, as it's got um, optical image stabilizer in there, so it's part of their ultrasonic range. Um, yeah, so great for uh, long long range photography if you're into that kind of thing. Um, so I don't really tend to use this often now as I've moved on from my wildlife days. Um, I'm kind of hoping to get back into it though so maybe the big boy can come out again someday. Okay, so this is actually my last lens um, which I own. So this is just another fixed lens. So this is a Canon 50mm lens. Uh, again, like I said, it's fixed so you can't really zoom in and out with it. Um, so this is this is probably best for still life and portraiture. Um, so I mean, I don't tend to use it up that often, but um, I think I should really because I'm shooting quite a lot of still life at the moment. So it should come in handy. Again, this this is not really one of Canon's best lenses. You can get better 50mm lenses, but I've had this quite a long time, so um, probably since when I first started out. Um, so yeah, you can obviously see the difference in the quality of the build. This is so light, whereas this is really heavy. Um, so yeah, like I said, great for portraiture and still life. Is it? It's just a fixed lens, so you'll you'll have to do most of the work. There's no zooming in and out. But yeah, um, 
pretty great lens. I know quite a lot of photographers that use these, but the Nikon version. Um, so yeah. So that's it for lenses. Okay guys, this is something that I've just found in my bag. Um, so this is actually a Canon 35mm film camera. So this is a fully automatic. Um, so yeah, this is so this is where you pop your film in. Don't worry, there's no film in here, so I've not used it in like two years. Um, so yeah, this is just a battery operated one, fully automatic. So you just pop your film back in there and just thread it through here. So it shoots black and white and colour. Um, so because at university we've got facilities to print black and white and film, uh, colour film. I got this um, in college, I think. Yeah, I think I got it in my first year of college. Uh, so I could shoot black and white film because they have black and white film facilities. So I, I already had an advantage when I came to university. But yeah, um, so this works only with the red dot, red dotted lenses. So this one wouldn't fit on it because it's got the white square. So you have to make sure you match up the red dot with whatever lens you're going to be using. Um, yeah, no, it's a really great little camera. Um, it's even got an automatic flash that pops up. I'm not going to do that because the battery's dying. Um, but no, guys, yeah, really great little camera. Um, obviously, I don't really use it often because I shoot all digital, but yeah, maybe one day it might come back out. So another handy thing you should have with you in your bag is one of these. So this is just um, a little wireless remote. Um, so with some Canon cameras you, there is a, a mode where you can have uh, a remote control so you just point and click. You've probably seen me with, quite the, with this in quite a lot of my videos as sometimes I tend to accidentally hold my hands up while it's still on my hand. But you know it's a really great little device to have, uh, especially if you shoot video like I am now. You can just um, pause. Um, and play again with this, but it's really great if you have, um, if you shoot quite a lot of um, self-portraiture, so um, I, t I used to tend to shoot quite a lot of self-portraiture back in the day. Um, I don't really as much now, um, time to move on, but yeah, this is a little great little thing and the battery has lasted ages, so I've had this for about three years now and it's still going. Good on it. So another thing I tend to use as well, which I don't we actually have on me at the moment, is a Canon speed light. So I'll just pop a picture of that up there. Um, so this little device tends to work if your onboard flash doesn't really um, have enough power to light your subject up. Um, you can actually buy accessories for these as well, so kind of like uh, soft boxes and stuff if you want to use it in place of studio lighting. Um, in most situations it works great, but I wouldn't really recommend it if you want to uh, use this all the time. This is just for little shoots um, on location if you don't have a uh, location studio lighting kit with you at the time. But no, it's a really great um, flash substitute um, if you can use it correctly as well. I'm still in the process of trying to learn. <laughs> but um, yeah, my, mine's currently on loan at the moment, which is why I don't actually have it on me. Um, but yeah, the, no, they're a little great device and you can shoot them shoot with them remotely as well so they don't actually have to be on the hot shoe of the camera um, this one shoots wirelessly um, but you know guys yeah they're uh, a really great device to have so you can actually control the power of the flash on the actual unit um, with the one that I do have like I said I don't have it with me now uh, otherwise I would show you um, but yeah that's that's really it guys for my equipment um, so that's all my lenses my camera um, Obviously I've got my tripod, but you don't really need to know much about that. You probably already know what a tripod is and what it does. <laughs> so if you enjoyed this video and would like to see more content like this, then don't forget to um, leave this video uh, a like down below. And don't forget to subscribe if you want to see next week's video first. Um, but yeah, that's really it. Hope you guys enjoyed that and I'll see you next week. Bye!